Hello everyone, I am back and I am very glad to be back with a tech video. This video is all about how to reduce the frame stutters in iRacing and also other games out there. So I hope you find this content helpful and as always follow me. Thanks for watching. Okay. I guess many of us iRacing members have stumbled over the word frame stutters occasionally and also know the directional meaning of the word. Facts are that iRacing a few years back was a tough challenge graphics wise with frustrating frame stutters that ruined the experience and immersion. I do believe that the graphical quality and performance is vital of any modern game and are a key factor of its success or lack of it. No one can argue about that. Nowadays things are better for sure and iRacing have stepped up their work about the subject and also a big big committed community have helped out over the years on the dedicated forum with tips and tricks. Nvidia and AMD have also introduced new hardware and software that are directly aimed to eliminate the frame stutter and the old technical evolution of the enthusiast PC market are continuously growing with new features and improvements. Some will say that frame stutters in games are a thing of the past, but I disagree. We all can't afford G-Sync and FreeSync monitors that more or less eliminate both frame stutters and screen tearing in the games we play. So if you got those monitors you are in luck and got the head start of reducing the frame stutters. And running iRacing in VR does not help either. When talking about frame stutters in the graphics, in general it can be explained as a rendering anomaly that occurs when there are delays between the rendered frames in the game. This will cause the game to have a visual hiccup. As you know, I am no technical guru in any way, uh, but I believe the term screen tearing also are related to frame stutters and I think you can't have both those artifacts at the same time. A short mention here about screen tearing is that it is less noticeable at higher FPS. It will still happen, but for instance, if you are running 200 FPS on a 60Hz monitor, you will get screen tearing, but the tears will go away much faster and will be harder to notice than a screen tear at 60FPS that you will clearly see moving through the screen. High FPS means the frames are changed much faster, so when the herd cycle of the monitor comes up, the frames would have already refreshed two or three times in the GPU, basically killing any tear that was happening. So adjusting and increasing the amount of FPS you are letting the game to have can reduce the screen tearing easily. Reducing frame stutters is way more complicated and screen tearing don't seem to upset gamers as much as frame stutters do. Another term we got to mention here is micro stutter that is widely known but somewhat different to both frame stutters and screen tearing as it is inherent to multi GPU configurations using an alternative frame rendering called AFR such as Nvidia SLI and AMD Crossfire. It can exist in single GPU PC systems, but not that much. There are a bunch of videos on YouTube both showing off and explaining these graphical artifacts of frame stutters and what we can do about it as a consumer. The game developers nowadays in this Steam age will get into trouble if not taking this subject seriously. For an example, the newly released game VRC7 on the PC had some heavily frame stutters in the beginning for some users, resulting in that many returned their copy of the game. The game developer did fix the stutters in a patch about two weeks later, but the damage was already made. Too bad because it is now a great rally game. The problem when dealing with this issue are the fact that highly varied hardware are in use in a PC system that makes it virtually impossible to eliminate frame stutters altogether in any game. 
The PC is not the fixed platform and the game developers cannot count that any frame being completed within a certain amount of time. For that kind of rendering pipeline consistency of the GPU we'd have to take a look towards fixed platforms such as game consoles from Sony or Microsoft. And we all know that both PlayStation and Xbox are way too limited hardware-wise to be suited for hardcore sim racing. So let's focus on the PC side of things and through careful optimizations of both hardware and software it is possible to get very close to minimizing frame stutters and my hopes are that this tech video will be helpful. As always I will have the simulator iRacing as the main choice of game but my recommendations of how to minimize frame stutters can be seen as a general information valid to the most games out there. To clear things up I have divided the information in five different categories and I have studied the iRacing knowledge base, scanned different forums and done widely searching on the internet for valid information and together with my own testing and experience in the subject I have come up with a list containing 60 things you can try for optimizing your PC in the goal to minimize frame stutter in the games. It can also help out to increase the overall performance including increasing FPS even if that is not the main goal here. We just want a smooth experience, that's all. One man's stutter is another man's freeze and unfortunately there is a truth behind that sentence. And frame stutters can if things are really really bad cause the famous screen freeze and we don't want that to happen. Some settings may work and some may not work and things will not work or work in conjunction to each other. So get your coffee ready and feel free to experiment with your settings. It can all be worth it. And one tip is to try testing each setting change individually followed by playing the game so you do see if the settings have any effect or not. Obviously I don't have the time to give each setting uh, change a uh, closer explanation, so see my tweaks as recommendations and investigate them further if you feel the need to it. And as always, write a comment and I will try to help out. Important note, after making any adjustments to the graphics options in iRacing, you must exit and restart it completely in order for the changes to take effect. A PC reboot can also be motivated when changing some of the general settings, even if the operating system not flagging for it. Here are my 60 ways to reduce frame stutters and optimize the graphics performance in iRacing. And the first category is iRacing settings. Run the automatic graphics configuration tool. This will automatically analyze your PC specs and adjust your iRacing graphics options for the best performance. After every new iRacing build update, rerun the automatic graphics configuration tool to avoid graphical artifacts and performance issues. After every new iRacing build update, uninstall the graphics driver using the program Display Driver Uninstaller DDU. Do a new clean install of the graphics driver. In Graphics Options, set the Max Pre Render Frames option to 1. Unless your system is using Crossfire or SLE, then set it to 2. Set the system memory slider in the graphics option to a value between 1000 MB and 4000 MB, no matter how much memory your PC might have. This will tell the operating system how much ROM iRacing can use. Reducing the maximum system memory is a good way to ensure that your PC is able to run background tasks that might otherwise reduce the performance. Set the GPU video memory slider in the graphics options 
to a value around 500 megabyte to 1000 megabyte below of how much memory your graphics card have. This is a good way to ensure that your PC is having enough video memory for needed tasks beside feeding iRacing. In graphic options, set frame rate limit to value not corresponding to your screen's refresh rate. Try 83 FPS to start or higher. Not necessary to go above 200 FPS. If you got the 60Hz monitor, don't set the limit to 60. If you got a 120Hz monitor, don't set it to 120. In graphics options, set VSync to on. Remember to choose VSync mode in the NVIDIA control panel, watch out for some input lag. In graphics options, uncheck the full screen options box and run iRacing in window mode. In graphics options, uncheck multi projection. In graphics options, uncheck render dynamic track data. In graphics options, uncheck render dynamic tire data. In graphics options, set dynamic cube maps to zero. In graphics options, set static cube maps to zero. In graphics options, night shadow maps, set number of lights to one. In graphics options, uncheck higher detail in mirrors. In graphics options, cockpit mirror max, reduce number of mirrors. In graphics options, set particles to low, enable full res and uncheck soft. In graphics options, uncheck 2048-2048 card textures. In graphics options, reduce the max car setting to around 25. In graphics options, reduce the values of some of your graphics detail settings to medium detail or lower. In iRacing renderer ENI file in my documents iRacing, edit low the textures when driving to zero. In iRacing up ENE file in my documents iRacing, edit show join leave to zero. In iRacing renderer ENI file in my documents iRacing, edit two back buffers to one. In iRacing renderer ENI file in my documents iRacing, edit visibility frame delay to zero. In replay, change the corresponding settings made under the graphics options here too. Check internet connection and ping value, default keyboard shortcut L. Next category, NVIDIA control panel settings in your gaming application. Set vSync to on and preferably use adaptive or fast sync mode on the Pascal GPUs Remember to activate vSync in game. Set triple buffering to on. Set max pre render frames to 1. A value of 2 or 3 can also work for some, despite not running multi GPU solutions. Set power management mode to prefer maximum performance or adaptive. Optimal has been known to cause issues. Don't use any AA or AF overrides, but if you do, make sure to set the same thing in the game settings so the values are the same. And AMD users can change the corresponding settings available. Next category, General Operating System Settings. Check that your Windows operating system is fully up to date. Check that your sound, network and graphics card drivers are all up to date. Check that your motherboard BIOS is up to date with the manufacturer. 
check your PC for malware and virus. And disable antivirus and anti-malware software when gaming. Remove or end unwanted programs or processes running alongside your game to reduce memory and CPU usage. You can do this in Windows Task Manager. Make sure your Windows operating system don't do updates when gaming. Disable Prefetch Superfetch when you got a SSD in your system. This will reduce unnecessary write operations. Format and reinstall Windows operating system. And use Windows 7 instead of Windows 10. Next category, MISC program settings. Use a GPU utility as MSI Afterburner or EVGA Precision X for GPU overclocking and underclocking, fine tuning and monitoring of temperatures. Use NVIDIA Inspector and enable custom AA and AF settings. Use NVIDIA Inspector and enable frame rate limiter, preferable V2. Use Reva Turner Statistic Server and enable frame rate limiter. Use a affinity control software for real time CPU and processes optimizations. Don't use or minimize the use of third party software as Logitech, ARX, Trading Paints, TeamSpeak, AI Analyze, iRacing, iSpeed, Sim Commander, etc. And the last category, here are my other recommendations. Make sure your PC meets the game's recommended system requirements. Overclock your CPU. iRacing loves CPU speed. Don't always use the latest graphics driver. Older driver can be better. Use the SSD for the game install. Uninstall the NVIDIA GeForce Experience software. Disconnect unnecessary USB devices when gaming. Get more RAM. Check your PC RAM for errors using programs like Memtest or Windows Memory Diagnostic. If streaming your gameplay, try use NVENC as decoder instead of X264. If running triple screens, do the bezel correction in the game rather than in the driver. And my last recommendation is just to pet the cat and relax. If you don't see the improvements you wanted, do something else for a while and try again later. This is an ongoing project that never ends, unfortunately. Thanks for watching and as always I see you in future iRacing related videos. Bye bye.